back to the Redbeard Outdoors podcast. I'm Jonathan, your host, and here at Redbeard Outdoors today, I have a great conversation for you with a guy named Mountain Goat Polly. That's not really his name, but everyone calls him Mountain Goat Polly because he loves being in the outdoors. He really enjoys hunting, but mainly just being out and connected with nature. And I ran into him uh, through a couple of friends while we were out hunting, and he's just an awesome individual that just loves to help other people get outdoors, pursue their passions out there as well. So before we get into that conversation, guys, I just wanted to give a shout out to show sponsors and partners. Of course, First Form and First Form Outdoors, Alpen Fuel, Heather's Choice. This podcast is also brought to you by Kafaru, Black Ovis, Absolute Aid, CBD Chewables, and Affect Beard Oil and Butter. So definitely go check out those companies. I'll leave the links down below, guys. I want to give back to you. And that's exactly why I do giveaways. And I work with the best companies because I want you to have the best gear and nutrition available for you while you're enjoying your outdoor endeavors, whatever they may be, or whether it be with fitness, at the gym. Uh, definitely go check out these companies. Support the podcast that way and go support these businesses as well. A lot of them are local or U.S companies, smaller guys that are growing bigger. I uh, just want to give them the shout out and support that they deserve, especially because they work with me here at Redbeard Outdoors. So thank you guys for that. Without further ado, let's get into the conversation here with Mountain Goat Polly. All right, everyone, I've got an awesome guest here. Uh, someone that I heard about while I was up on the mountain while, while we were out uh, doing a late season cow elk hunt. And I was told to look him up. Turns out to be an awesome dude, at least from what I've seen through Instagram and the few times that we've chatted. Uh, this is Mountain Goat Polly. This is, is how he's known out in the industry. Uh, but give us some a little bit of background on who you are, what you like to do, and why you spend so much time outdoors. Oh, I, I grew up in Utah. I've lived here my whole life. Actually, I grew up in Centerville and uh, started at a very young age um, in the outdoors with my dad. My dad was, got us into scouting young and he was a hunter, you know, and he just taught us boys, you know, how to live off the land and go out and hunt and have a good time and, and uh, respect, respect, you know, the animals and, and the earth and just taught us really well. And, and uh, I've kind of continued on throughout my life and, pass that on to my one daughter who hunted while she lived here and now she doesn't live here. So it's kind of, I miss that daddy daughter time with her, but it was fun to, to teach her <clears throat> what I had been taught by my dad. And then now my, my wife's hunted with me, you know, quite a bit. And uh, that's a, that's a lot of fun. And yeah, that's kind of, I'm a grandpa. I'm getting up there, <laughs> but I still can, I still get around the mountains and I, I'm, I'm happy every day. And my body still does what I, what I ask it to do. That's awesome. Yeah. That's kind of one of my goals. And that's why I really, um, you know, kind of hit it hard, uh, in the last couple of years, especially I kind of hit my lowest point as far as physically, I was still in the gym every day. You know, I've always been kind of a gym rat since high school and, uh, I was strong, but I was fat and I was like, man, if I want to pursue all these outdoors things and I, and I want to be a good grandpa, you know, I, I need to start now in my twenties. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the little investments every day. And so it's cool that, I mean, you don't seem that old. I, I would say I'd peg you from mid forties. And is that about right? 48. No. Oh, okay. There you go. So yeah, you're not, yeah. But I mean, I still, I want to be up there as well. And the, you know, getting out there as much as you are. And I've got a couple of good questions for you in, in regards to that as well. But, but first off, um, talk to me a little bit more about how, I mean, you say you got into it through scouting. Your dad took you out hunting. Um, but growing up with kind of off off air, we, we talked about how you had three daughters and a wife. How did you involve the family outdoors? Because, you know, most people think women or, or, or daughters don't really want to go outside and get all muddy and dirty and and grimy. But, um, you know, you obviously made it work. So how, what were some things that you did? Oh, you got to start them young. If you don't start them young and you got to take advantage of the opportunities when they ask to go outside and to go in the outdoors, you have to do it because if you don't, you'll miss that opportunity. My, the daughter, so my two of my daughters 
they love camping. They love to go out hunting with me, but they don't want to pull the trigger. And that's totally fine. My one daughter really showed interest. And I kind of was like, yeah, I don't know, you know. And then she finally, at the age of 12, she was like, dad, I really want to do this. I'm like, you're serious. You want to hunt. And she goes, I, I love seeing what you do. I love going out with you, but I want to hunt. And I'm like, okay. We <laughs> did a tr crash course with hunter safety online, got her to a shoot before the, before you put in for the tags for that year. And we got her put in and she was hooked. So I think, I think what it is, is you just got to take the opportunity when they show that interest, if you want them to hunt with you then take them with you. And, just, and if they don't just take them with you and then let them make the decision, you know? So <laughs> it's, yeah, exactly. Uh, but I'm blessed to have a wife that loves to do what I do and she loves to come along and she loves to hunt as well. You know, um, she doesn't take killing animals lightly. She, she's a very spiritual person. But um, so um, she doesn't always like to pull the trigger, but um, but she still loves to be out in the outdoors and and hunt with me. So I'll take it. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I definitely want to touch on that as well. Um, the spirituality aspect of things here. Uh, but before we get into that, I, I just wanted to tap on something that you, you know, you, along with many other people that I've spoken with that are successful at getting their kids into either the same hobbies as them, or especially, you know, again, you know, I, I hate to hit on this so much, but it's true that a lot of people, and I've heard this from some of the women I've spoken with that they grew up where their dads didn't take them out and they don't understand why. And they're pretty sure it's because they just thought that their daughters wouldn't be interested. And, and so I think it's key that you at least introduce them to it, whether that be through like what you were saying, camping or anytime they show interest. I think that's super key uh, in, in anything. Like my daughter saw me, she sees me shoot my bow every single day. She saw that her brothers had a bow and she was like, dad, can I try? And she's five. And I was like, oh, of course, definitely. So we, you know, we've got her out there and she, she pulled her bow back and shot and she's like, oh, can we get me one? I was like, of course you can. And so, you know, just, you go, man. exactly. So you got to key in on those moments, whether you feel like it or not, um, mm -hmm. when they come to you and they say, you know, with those big old eyes and they're like, dad, can I go, you know, you got to key in on that. So I, I love that. That's, that's awesome. That's a, that's a golden nugget right there. Um, but tell me a little bit more about the the spiritual, the spirituality aspect of it for you and your wife, because I think that, you know, people will see someone like you, who's a very successful hunter has been hunting for years. You've obviously put down quite a few animals. Um, talk to me about the, the other side of it that a lot of people don't see, whether that be on Instagram or wherever in social media, um, that, that spiritual side of hunting for you and for your wife. Well, that started at a very young age with me as well. My dad, um, we're Na we have Native American in this. My dad's like close to 60%. I think I've got like 25 or 26, somewhere in there. And he just taught us, like I said, at a very young age, you know, respect Mother Earth, respect the animals you hunt. Um, clean up after yourself. Don't, don't leave them out. Leave them out in the way you found it. And we were just taught at a young age to be that way. And just the connection with mother earth. It wasn't always about going out and killing as much as it was just going and enjoying nature and the outdoors, family, friends. And I, you know, and that's, it's people. And I think more and more and more people are starting to, to show that on social media now, because it's, it's okay. It's who it, you know, because hunting to me is a very spiritual thing. I mean, it's probably the closest thing that I can, I mean, the connection with the animal, the earth, God, or whoever you, you feel like your creator is, if you believe that, um, that's where I feel closest. And, and my wife's the same way. We just love being out there in the outdoors together, sharing those moments together. And I don't know what to say. I hate I just I put my back against a tree or touching a tree and just feeling its energy and taking your shoes off at camp and just, you know, putting them against the earth and taking in the earth's energy. No, I definitely, I, I understand that a hundred percent. I, um, you know, it's for me almost hard to not have time up in the mountains, like during winter, especially, um, 
when you're so bundled up, even when you are up there, it can still be hard to, to connect because you're not soaking up as many sun rays because you're so bundled up. Um, and, and I do everything I can to make sure we get outside year round, but there's something about spring, like this time of year right now, even though we get the random, uh, you know, snowstorms in April, <clears throat> Utah, um so it's <laughs> we need it though so bad i agree but it could stay up in the mountains the mountains can have the yeah. snow and like i love every season for what it is but once Mar the end of march rolls around like i'm ready for spring backpacking mm. camping stuff like that and uh growing up in north carolina it's a little different you do start actually camping in april um you're not worried about random snowstorms you can you know you can plant your garden in april uh you're <laughs> right. <not to> worry. <laughs> i made that mistake no, last you year. gotta wait till mother's day in utah and then even after then it's like <laughs> it's still kind of iffy yeah <laughs> yeah i think i waited until the first saturday of may last mm -hmm. year and i i planted a whole garden with the kids and everything and like three days later there was a frost i'm like oh <laughs> <laughs> Over. <laughs> yep, try again uh the nursery loved me that year okay <laughs> um no but I, I i agree with with getting out there and getting connected like there's something about it that you can't really put words to and especially for someone like yourself that's been out doing it for so long it's hard to to explain that to other people you almost want to just take them by the hand and be like let's go we're gonna go spend two days out there and then you'll understand because you can't really you can't really put it to words. Like it's just, I, there's something about it. You just can't put it into words uh, how special it is to get out there and get connected. Um, and I love it. I absolutely love going out again, enjoying every season for what it is. So spring, especially mid to late spring for us. And I don't know if you do much. I know you do bear hunting and we'll get into that in a little bit as well. Cause I'm very interested in talking <laughs> you, to you about that. You need to do it, dude. You're gonna oh yeah. <laughs> yeah no definitely but and i love i love turkey hunting as well but but spring and kind of summer for me are a lot of like camping and backpacking um kind of getting my body used to carrying weight um more than just across flat land here or short little hikes that we do with a family so um i mean for you i guess bear hunting is a big thing in the spring for you as well um but you know, there's bear hunting. Do you go out and you do camping? Do you glamp? Do you like, what are some of the things that you love doing around springtime? Uh, bear hunting is my big thing. Like I look forward to it. Like I, like, like yesterday I seen a couple bears get killed in Montana and I'm like, Oh man, I just can't wait. Like I'm ready to get up there. And I think that's the fun part about the springtime is just that's like the first big game hunt you get to go on. You kind of getting tuned up again. Like you said, you start getting in shape a little earlier because you know you're going bear hunting. So I've, I've been out hiking, like you said, as much as you can because of the weather in Utah. And, uh, but yeah, I get, I get amped up for bear hunting. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, talk, then delve into that a little bit for me. Uh, what's the, where does this passion for bear hunting come uh, for, for you? And then, uh, you know, it's obviously a yearly thing. Do you go on multiple spring bear hunts, just one a year? Like delve into that a little bit more. Um, usually one a year. The first, so the first bear I ever, I never hunted bears until, is it seven years ago or eight years ago, I think. I, I, it's hard for me to, yeah, I can't remember. But I went on an Idaho backcountry hunt with, a, with, with some friends, spot and stop, getting killed. Um, my friend said, hey, I'll help you set up a bait. I'm like, okay. So I got a bunch of stuff here in Utah, went back up to Idaho, set a bait, and ended up killing um, a really beautiful big bear my first year. Um, big old nasty boar, scars on his face. I mean, he was just a, 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 a fighter. And uh, was super pumped, and I was just hooked after that. And then my brother had been hunting bears in Montana on a yearly basis with some friends. And I'm like, he's like, come with us to Montana. So we started going to Montana spot and stock. And, and then uh, we started hunting with our, our really good friend, Jana Waller. And she invites us up every year to go hunt bears with her. And that's kind of a tradition now. And that's where we're going next month again. And it's just fun getting out with friends and, and, looking for bears they're cool they're just a cool animal i don't know what to say bears are a very cool animal they're fun to watch 
the, the, the sows with their cubs just hanging out, chilling, running around. They're just, it's just a fun time. And bear meat is delicious, like you said. I mean, I have to give you it. We, we can a lot of ours. Um, and because, uh, well, you know, Brett, he got me into canning a few years back and it's, it's money. I love it. That's what I've heard. That it's one of the best ways to have bear meat is just to jar it up with some veggies and, um, you know, you put it through the pressure cooker. So it's mm-hmm. basically, uh, I mean, it's cooked all the way through, but it's not dry. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and so I'm, yeah, that, you know, I, I need to get some, uh, I think, well, my buddy that's going out and to Wyoming next month, if he brings some back, he's usually really good at, he always shares me. I've probably got, I don't know, eight or nine different animals in my freezer out there <laughs> right now. <laughs> not all of, not all of some of them. I say about half of them are from me. The other half are from his, cause you know, he's been hunting for a longer. So he, uh, you know, he got moose last year and uh, cougar and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, so bear, bear meat and then bear. So what is it that intrigues you about? Cause like for me, my, my favorite big game animal, maybe it's cause I haven't been able to, to punch a tag yet on an elk, but is elk. I love the interaction. I love how, the fact that an 800 pound animal can walk around and be super quiet, but I take one step and the, you know, forest knows I'm there. Um, exactly. Like, <laughs> like I, I love, they're just majestic to me. Um, even more so than like, I like mule deer. They're fun, but I, I just love that interaction. I love listening to them, watching them. Um, what is it about bears that just kind of just get you going and get you super excited that you want to go every year? Uh, well, I'll touch on elk is definitely my number one animal as well. But as far as bears, what I think it's just that first hunt of the year. Like I said, you get you getting tuned up, and it's a good it's a good way to get out early in the spring and, in, and enjoy nature and just see all the, the new flowers, the green grass, because that's what the bears love is that green grass. So you you know you're looking for those type of things, and just like I said, they're just a cool animal. I mean, bears are cool. I mean, cause you don't, you, you, I never even really seen a bear until I started hunting them. You know what I mean? And then, you, and when you blast your guts out for hours looking for bears, or and you'll find a stump that's got to be a bear, and then like, no, that's a stump. And then you turn back and it moves. Holy crap, it's a bear! You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so, um, but yeah, they're just a really cool animal. I just like hunting them, and we need to hunt them. You know, they're a predator. They're you know, that's very important too, to help our ungulate populations, you know, our deer and elk, they do a tremendous amount of damage to those animals. So it's fun to hunt them. It's fun to help the deer and elk and they're good to eat. Yeah, there you go. And, uh, you know, it's funny when I first heard that you can eat bear meat, I was kind of like, wait, what? And I think it might've been on, (laughs) on meat eater where I heard him talk about eating cougar and, um, and he messed up and, you know, anyone out there listening, if you eat a, if you're eating predator meat, whether it be bear or cougar, um, you know, you need to make sure it's cooked all the way through. I think it's what 165 degrees internal temperature, yep. you know, um, obviously don't want to burn it. I wouldn't recommend bear steaks because a well-done steak is nasty. So, <laughs> um, but there's, there's really good ways. Like we did a cougar curry last year. Um, and again, I'm really intrigued about this, this bear, uh, the canned bear. Uh, but, but the fact that again, you're not just out there to kill. Um, it is something that, you know, you're, you're going out there to be connected with nature. You're going out there to enjoy time with, with loved ones, family and friends, and you're, you're able to go watch and, and, and enjoy this, uh, majestic creature that's out there. Um, and again, they're another animal too. That's like, they're five, six, 700 pounds. Sometimes the bigger ones, but like three to 500 pound animals that can be super quiet yet. They're so powerful, you know, they anyway. are crazy quiet. We went to I'll tell you, so we were in Canada three years ago on it. We went to Saskatchewan to hunt bears. My wife was hunting them. We were on the ground with bows and uh, they would sneak in. You wouldn't even know they were there. Like This is, this is one of the stories I'll tell you really quick. Cause you say how sneaky they are and how, how sneaky the elk are. We were back to the motel that night, our cabin we were staying in. We're flipping through. We're getting ready to post some videos of some bears we'd videoed. We look behind. We look. We're going through, and we look 
in there and behind us, there's a bear sitting there. We had no clue that this bear would, had been sitting right behind us. And we're like, uh, we had. <laughs> it's kind of hanging out there. It's kind of crazy. We were like, whoa. But yeah. So what what would you say would be, I mean, because that, that is pretty, again, I, I've heard other stories too, where, you know, they had radio collared a, a bear and they were, you know, trying to track it down. And the, the person walking with the radio collar antenna thing, uh, I don't know all these technical terms, but they were tracking it and they were saying that the beeps that they were hearing were telling them that this bear was circling them. And they were sitting there like, we can't hear anything. You know, and so it's it's crazy to think that that these big animals can they've just the way their feet are set up, the way they know how to walk. Um, if they don't want to be heard, you know, you won't know they're there. Um, that's, that's pretty intense. But for for you, what would be your favorite? You know, you say you've been for about seven years now. What would be your your favorite story or experience that you've had on a bear hunt up to now? Oh wow. <sighs> That's going to be a tough one because there's, well, I got to say with my wife was probably the coolest, you know, we were hunting them on the ground and just giant black bears. And the one she ended up killing, he came in, we were hunting on baits. He came in and he was super smart. He hid behind the bait and would come out and would give her a shot and lights fading. And I'm like, we got to make him nervous. You got to, you got to, you got to get up and move and see if he'll come out and look at you. And, oh, he came out and looked at her at 12 yards and postured at her. It was scary. And I think she still has PTSD to this day. We, we sometimes watch it. Oh man. It was intense, but he ended up turning and she put it, slid an arrow in perfect quartering away. And he went like 60 yards, but that was, that was one of the really one of the coolest hunts. I mean, you know, that really was. And then I gotta touch on one more while we're there. I was in Montana with my my one of or my good friend Jana Waller, and we watched two grizzly bears mate for seven hours in a place that there's there shouldn't be grizzly bears. We came across them. And then like two days later, so I ended up killing a bear the next day. Two days later, we watched a sow with a cub chase a black another uh boar up a pine tree clear to the very top and we watched them fight for like 20 minutes at the top of this pine tree the tree is like swaying back and forth um there's a video on my youtube channel of it if you want to go there and watch these two bears fight it out it's pretty cool but um those two experiences are pretty cool yeah, that's pretty intense and she was probably fighting them off because they they do the thing where they'll kill the cubs off so she'll go mm -hmm. into heat yep it was she did not even give that boar an opportunity she was literally a, probably 100 yards above him and the wind must have been blowing up like this because we were watching them come across the side of this hill all of a sudden she like gets up and she and she like faces the wind he had no clue she was there i don't think all of a sudden she just takes off full boar down the hill lines him out and all of a sudden he's like up the top of this tree she's up the tree after him and she would not let him down. It was, it was pretty cool. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. I have to go watch that video. That's a lot of cool insane. experiences of spring bear. That's why you got to get out there in the spring. We call the wolf in to 10 yards. My brother and I did when we were bear hunting in Montana. That's on mm -hmm. my YouTube too. I say wolves kind of, so most other animals are pretty, I mean, unless it's a sow with cubs, mm -hmm. most animals are pretty solitary as far as predators. So, you know, maybe this is me being overconfident, but I'm like, I could, I could deal with one predator, right? But wolves freak me out because they're super, I mean, they're big and tough. First of all, like pound for pound, they're super strong. Oh, and, yeah. and then on their hind legs, they're, they're over six feet tall. And on top of that, if there's one, you know, there's multiple. And so it's just, uh, it's one of those animals that like, I have a good, healthy respect for. Like cougars, I respect them. I know they're out there, but I know they're also scared of me. Wolves, on the other hand, I'm like, they kind of know they travel in packs and they know they're kind of <laughs> the, the king of whatever area they're in. So yep, they're the ultimate predator for sure when they're together. Oh yeah, no, definitely. That's crazy. Um, 
Yeah, and you know, sorry, suppose... there's three stories. Sorry. <laughs> oh no, that I love it. I love hearing. They're love all hearing spring stories. bear too. That's the thing is all those stories were during this, you know, bear hunting have been some of the coolest experiences that I've had on the mountain. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> um, so with with I mean, you mentioned elk being your favorite big game animal. Um, why is that for you? Like, obviously, I have my reasons, but. But you've been hunting a lot longer than me, so. Like you said, they're just, I mean, everybody says the word majestic, but they are just a beautiful animal. I mean, like you said, when they're, they, how do they, how do they get through the timber so quiet? You don't even hear them until they're on you. I mean, big bull is coming in, moving their racks. And you, you might catch a twig every once in a while, snap, but they can be on you. And it's like, where did that bull come from? Like he's there on you and you're like, and you're caught with your pants down and you can't get a shot. And it's like, how did he do that? Uh, and then just hunting them in the rut. I mean, just to listen to him bugle and to have that interaction with elk. Oh, the smell of them too. I don't know. I love the smell of elk too. When you get into elk country, it's like, oh yeah, we're, they're right here, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, they're so just this- delicious too. <laughs> <laughs> so far they're my favorite meat like i've had again i've had moose moose is okay um it's good um but the the elk meat is just i mean that's by far my favorite i feel like it's super versatile it's just like a lean steak oh, um yeah. you know it's just so good but i agree with you on that too they're uh they're very very subtle and i don't know how like whenever i tell people you know at work I'm, they're like hey where are you gonna go for a week i'm like yeah, I'm chasing these six, 700 pound animals with swords on their heads for fun with a bow. Yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> They're just laughing at me. They're like, what are you talking about? You know, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun and I'm super excited for this year already. You know, at the end of last season, I was already ready for this season. Right. Um, and <laughs> and it, it's crazy. Cause so I, you know, I, I'd heard one or two bugles. I'd gotten some to bugle back to me, but they're kind of, they, they had been pressured, um, this year and it, just like any other year. And so they were pretty quiet for the most part. Um, but the very last day, I want to say it was either the 21st or the 22nd of this last season. Cause Utah finally got smart and extended it another week. Um, was nice. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. And I'm glad that that carried on over into this, this week or this year as well. Um, but the very last day, uh, we got into this, a, a buddy of mine, and his and his uh, hunting partner had they were not too far away from us a couple of miles from us and he told me he was like hey we got into this bowl that had multiple bulls in it and we're gonna hit it in the morning and this was the last day of the hunt and i was like great i'm gonna you know i'll tag along and so we get in there and it was before light and man there were four bulls going off and i had never other than on youtube right which i take that with a grain of salt because i'm like who knows where these guys are actually hunting um I, it was the most amazing thing to hear. And then they all had like different voices and like being able to compare the one that we called squeaker. Cause he had like, it just, he sounded squeaky. And then the other one that just, the only thing he did was raspy deep. Like you could tell he was almost like the boss of that little draw. And then, you know, there was, uh, it was just awesome to just sit back and listen to the bugles and to actually hear and be able to distinguish the different bulls that were going off and how they communicated with each other. I thought that was awesome. There's yeah. It's just, Oh, I'm ready to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Get me fired up. I love, I don't know. And I just love when I walk up on a bull, I just love putting my hand on them. They're, they're just, I don't know. I don't know. I just have that connection with elk. And, yeah. And breaking them down and just love i love the whole process of that's awesome so uh and then you know you got into uh, maybe delve into a little bit as far as like uh gear testing and reviewing is that just did that just kind of come naturally to you because you were already outside you were already using this stuff you just kind of would send feedback or whatever to these companies and you start working with people or uh you know what 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 gets you going about you know, you just got a new rifle for bear season and stuff like that. Like you're obviously a gear nerd like me. What, what keeps you going there? Um, I, I, so I'm really selective on the gear that I use and what I'll promote. I don't want to be the guy that's like somebody sent me stuff for free and it's like, Oh, this is the best thing on the planet type of thing. 
I'll try it out if I like it. I'll give you my honest opinion. I'm not, that doesn't mean it's going to go on my social media though. Um, I, I work with companies that I 100% believe in their product. <clears throat> and I love doing the reviews on those kinds of things because that's the stuff I put to the test and I believe in it. It's going to take care of me in the back country or whenever I'm on a hunt. And yeah, and I, I love good gear. <laughs> I only want to rock the best. <laughs> exactly. And I'm lucky to work with some really good companies. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I mean, I've, I've noticed that, that you've got some really good companies that, that work with you and they seem to listen to, uh, you know, your feedback and obviously other customers feedbacks as well. Um, but I, I do like that. The fact that, you know, it is important to constantly be, you know, going after the, the, the gear that's going to take, I like how you said, take care of you in the back country. Um, maybe hit on that a little bit. Have you had bad experiences before? Kind of sound like you have. <laughs> Yeah, I've had bad experiences with boots, packs, you know, like bad breaks, you know, because it wasn't, you know, you got too much weight and you couldn't handle it or the boots leak and you're wet. Like my brother and I sometimes will talk was like, how did we survive when we used to go hunting with dad? Because all we'd wear is like BDUs. I don't even remember what kind of shoes I would wear. Honestly, we'd be hunting in snow. <laughs> Maybe because we were kids and we we're just tough and we don't, we just didn't ever complain. I, you know. Or your brain blocked it out because it was so yeah. traumatic. Okay. <laughs> but I just love the comforts of being warm, comfortable feet, um, dry, a comfortable pack. So when I get to camp, my back's not sore, or, you know, or I'm backing out of an animal and I'm not like sagged down. It's, it fits good. Um, so yeah, you learn what you learn and you use what works for you. You know, I'm not saying just the products that I use are the best out there for everybody because they're not, you know, everybody's feet's different. Everybody's back's different, you know, as far as boots and packs. You know, socks are my favorite. I don't, I, I, don't ask. I don't have a brand that I use, but I'm always searching for a different sock. I'm always at REI. I'm always at Cabela's. And I love, I, I, I always pack extra socks. That's my thing. I love to have fresh socks sometimes twice a day. I'm aware. <laughs> Awesome. That's awesome. No, I love it. So, I mean, I was going to ask you actually your top three pieces of gear. So let's, I mean, socks are your favorite. Um, <laughs> you know, to talk to me a little bit more about that. What makes the perfect sock in your opinion? I like a good thin sock that has, it, it doesn't stretch out. So I always look kind of like buy my socks in a smaller size just so they stay nice and tight on my foot. So I don't get that loose bunch up in my boot. And I like a really thin sock. So, so I kind of get my boots to where I don't wear, I don't ever wear super thick socks just because I think my feet sweat. Maybe that's why. And so, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay. So a good thin sock. Have you, what, what's the one that you're current? And I'm, I, I want to talk about this because I really enjoy gear. You know, I'm, I'm actually kind of looking at like different. <laughs> I know you're going to ask. <laughs> my ahead. favorite sock, they discontinued it, dude. Oh no. It was what a Cabela's. It? it was a Cabela's sock. I love. Really? It. Yeah, and they don't make them anymore. Last year they quit making them, so I'm using all the ones I have right now. I'm gonna wear them out, and then. But I did find some socks at REI last year. All right, we're gonna do a brief break on that sock discussion. <laughs> it turned into something that was pretty awesome, actually, learning about gear and socks and being gear nerds. But uh, just wanted to shout out the Redbeards Fit crew, the people in there. Thank you so much for joining. I'd love to see you over there as well. A Redbeard's Fit Crew is all about just bettering your life. You don't have to be extremely fit. You don't have to have a red beard. Uh, just come join us over there. You'll meet some people in your area. Maybe you can get out and enjoy hiking with them, whether it be as a family or uh, just meeting new friends. Uh, everyone is looking for bigger groups of friends to get out and or maybe even just one friend to be able to get out and enjoy the outdoors. So go check out Redbeard's Fit Crew. Again, links down below. And of course, the First Form Outdoors page as well on Facebook it is a private group of individuals that you will also be able to find people in your area that are just in that pursuit of better health and getting the in the outdoors as much as possible. So go check out those two groups. Links are down below, guys. And now back to our awesome gear discussion about socks. That I really liked, and I, I couldn't tell you what the name of them is. So, I mean, is it like a merino that you prefer or a synthetic? I think the Cabela's ones are merino. They're, mm -hmm. they're merino synthetic blend. 
And they're more of a, they're not a heavy duty sock. You're saying more uh, of a thin sock. Uh, yeah. Hmm. I'm trying to think. So I use the smart wool sock liner. I think that's the one that I bought at REI was the smart wool. Okay. Yeah. So the smart wool sock liner is almost like uh church socks. I, I don't know mm -hmm. if you know what I'm talking about there, but it's super yep. thin um, and it doesn't really stretch out on you and it wicks away that moisture, um, which I've got a, I've got a problem where I get, I can't remember the name of it, but like my hands kind of swell up a little bit. I noticed because my ring doesn't um, want to ever come off uh, after I go hiking for a while, but my hands swell up a little bit and my feet get really, really sweaty. Not that anyone cares about that, but um, <laughs> you know, the smart wool liner helps a lot, but also the black Ovis. I don't know if you've tried their socks at all, but the, uh, they, make, they make like a <laughs> mid to thin Merino sock. And so when I pair those two, uh, it's like for me anyway it's a really good combo obviously you've been using socks for a lot longer than i have but no uh, i'm always looking for socks that's why i told you i'm a sock junkie like i'm all like i carry like i tell you i'll switch them out my wife's like like she folded my socks the other day and she's just like that's just my normal socks that i wear she's like you have too many socks <laughs> i'll come home with a new package of socks she's like what are you doing i'm like i need new socks <laughs> that's hilarious that's funny okay so socks are your number one uh you know you want to have good dry feet good you know maybe that's maybe that's what's coming in here you remember as a child having wet feet hiking and maybe. you're like i need to have all the extra socks <laughs> that's awesome uh, what, <laughs> what would be your number two piece of gear that you would you would go for that you need Oh, my number two. Well, I should probably be my number one, but my number two would be my my in reach for sure. That's definitely something I don't go anywhere without. Um, I could save your life. I had a really bad experience back in 2011, I think, or 12. I broke my leg and ankle <clears throat> on the mountain hunting deer and uh Luckily, I wasn't by myself. My brother and my dad and my daughter were there. So my brother was able to hike to get, it took him about an hour to get service. I was able to get service. And uh, I got a life ladder off the mountain that day. I was broke down. And wow. from that point on, because I, I do a lot of solo hunting. And uh, I was like, and that's so I, when I when so it used to be DeLorme. And they had this little brick one that I bought way back then. And then they upgraded to another one and then, then they upgraded to another one. But um, I would say that would be the number one thing. If you can afford to in, afford to in reach, I would definitely be carrying one of those with you all the time. Cause you, it happens so quick. I was on the ground, broken ankle, turned the wrong, my ankle was turned the other way. And it was just like, if I was by myself, I mean, I probably could have drugged myself. Maybe, I don't know. You just don't know. So. Yeah. Well, to, so tell me that. I mean, that sounds like a pretty interesting and, and crazy story. You said this was back in 2010? 20, I think 11. So <laughs> what what were you doing? What was going on? I imagine you were hunting. Uh, but we were hunting deer. My niece shot her first deer and we were like, she wanted to bring it home whole. And my dad was like, no, just cut it up, boys get it on your backs. Let's get out of here. And my brother and I, Oh, we can get this two point out of here. It's not that big of a deal. At least get it down to the trail where it's easier to drag. I was kind of being reckless coming across the side of a hill, pulling with all my weight, you know, and I had my pack, my rifle on and I was pulling this deer. We were taking turns and which I never dragged deer because we always see bone them and quarter them or yeah. you know, one way or the other. And I just remember I, I think I caught my foot on a rock and it tripped me up and I, we were on a kind of a steep angle. And, uh, when I planted with my left foot, must have just been the perfect angle. And it just, and I held it go. And I looked up at my brother and I go, I think I just broke my leg. And he's like, no. And I looked down and my ankle is turned the other way. And I'm like, I used to, I was a fireman for uh, eight, 10 years <clears throat> back in the day. And uh, I was like, I got to set that thing back in position before. So I just hurried and reached down, grabbed my ankle and boot and just 
popped it back in. And then I wanted to shoot myself. <laughs> I bet that sounds terrible. <laughs> it hurt so bad. And, and then, yeah, I was broke down. It was a bad day. <laughs> And you, I mean, I imagine, so, you know, just for a little pointers that you bring that up, you know, that that's an awful experience. Um, it's good that you had people around you. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but I bet you never dragged a deer out after that. Right? No, <laughs> uh, nope. but, but in all reality, like a good pointer there, you didn't remove your boot, right? I didn't. Well, when my, my, I wanted to get up off my feet. Mm. My dad was, my dad used to be a fireman and EMT too, as well. And he's like, no, you just sit down. You're not going anywhere, son. And mm-hmm. I go, well, I know my leg's broken because I, I felt it break. Mm-hmm. And, I, and that was me. I made the call. I'm like, well, take my boot off. I want to see what my foot looks mm-hmm. like. Because I knew I wasn't walking. So, but in like, if it was just an ankle sprain, I probably would have just left it on, like you said, to keep it supported. But I knew I broke my leg because you can see the deformity in my, in my leg was like this, you know, kind of like bent. Your ankle wasn't just stretching. It was, it was, you know, in the wrong direction. So you kind of knew. <laughs> <laughs> so we took my boot off and it, you know, it swelled up. We, it, we were lucky to even get my boot off. It swelled up so quick. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it was snow. We were, we were, luckily, I was on the sunny side, but it had snowed the night before. And, uh, but the sun was on that side, but there was still some snow. So we just packed my ankle with with snow and almost made it numb which felt good and when they got there they were like you want some morphine and I, now i wish i would have taken it but i didn't i'm like no just get me out of here mm-hmm. <laughs> <To> the hospital <laughs> but i learned a lot that day not just not being reckless on the mountain watching where you're putting your feet i'm a lot more careful now on the mountain you know, especially when I'm by myself, I'm always thinking like, hey, is this really what I should be doing? Or is this a smart move? Or should I maybe go down instead of trying to climb down these rocks? You know, I'm always like, you know, because I don't want to have that ever happen again. <laughs> right. Yeah. So it was yeah, a good so, experience. No, for sure. And um, I mean, that's that's pretty intense, you know, to have an actual ankle break. And again, it was good that you weren't out by yourself. And, and I agree with you that the Garmin in reach, like, so I when I started hunting, usually I was out, you know, with a buddy of mine or whatever, and he had an inreach, um, or when we'd go backpacking, et cetera. And, uh, it was, it was definitely a, a help for my wife to know that everything was okay. Um, whenever I'd send her a text, whenever we get to a new spot or at lunchtime, or, you know, we got to camp at night, whatever. Um, and eventually I did. And I, you know, you said, if you can afford it, get one, I'd say, if you can't afford it, save up for it because it's definitely, <laughs> a big no. deal um, to have that Garmin in reach that little, I mean, it's not, it doesn't weigh anything pairs mm-hmm. up with your phone and you can send text messages. It's got an SOS feature uh, and you may never need it, but again, it's better to have it and not need it, you know? Um, and I, I know they, they're constantly running deals. So I'd recommend that people go look that up for sure. Uh, communication is definitely key if you're going to go out and do some, some things. And you, you probably weren't even thinking like that was normal side healing for you um and you broke your ankle you know it was like i said i think it's just like planted the perfect angle that's what the doctor said i'm like is this like a normal injury and he's like you probably just planted just just perfect and just the right angle and your leg just gave away <clears throat> yep oh. exactly and you've been doing i mean you side healed thousands of times before that i'm sure yep. um with heavy pack <laughs> and everything so you know again that's just a, a good cautionary kind of tail there for for people that maybe think that they're a little overconfident in the mountain uh you know make sure you got a way to communicate that's for sure um the mountain will be, always win <laughs> oh yes oh yes definitely um uh, what would be your number three if you had to pick just three pieces of gear um to go out in the mountains with a gun either it'd be a gun I, well, we'll, we'll get to weapons here in a minute We'll oh, okay. weapons. Sorry, I, I should have Here. clarified. Oh. Outside of outside of weaponry. Well, I got gotta have good socks. You gotta have good boots to go with them. Because <laughs> if your feet aren't happy, you're not a happy you're not a, ha- a happy hunter. You got blisters. 
and those type of things. So I, I think feet are really important to me. <laughs> so maybe I did. Like I said, I don't remember even what kind of shoes I used to wear when I was a kid. So maybe that's the thing that stuck in <laughs> <laughs> between between hunting with your dad and breaking yeah. your ankle you're like <laughs> i need these three things <laughs> i wear a very supportive boot now it's i never wear a low top it's always mm -hmm. on the top and so yeah, i was going to ask you about that too that when you broke your ankle did you have a boot that had ankle support it had decent ankle support but nothing like the boots i wear now mm -hmm. yeah the, the boots i wear Amberlands now the 980 mm -hmm um super good ankle support i mean they're a great boot for my foot i love them <laughs> definitely would recommend that boot if you're looking for a good good boot they yeah zamberlins are definitely good um i don't have narrow feet so i tried them and i couldn't quite squeeze into them <clears throat> uh um, there's there, most boots were kind of too narrow even the wide were a little too narrow because again my feet and most people do you get a little bit of swelling when you're hiking mm -hmm. for miles and miles in the mountains um but definitely zamberlin's a good way to go if you've got that foot that can you know most people have i've just got a hobbit foot that's just super wide so uh you know <laughs> <laughs> that's just my luck that's kind of how things go for me and they, they always have everyone's cool you know growing up wearing nikes and everything and i'm like i can't even fit in how do you guys fit your feet into those things uh, you wear right. sandals everywhere <laughs> yeah exactly right <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but that, that's cool, man. So I, I agree. It's, you know, it's, it's definitely important to have good footwear, good socks, um, but definitely, you know, ankle support. I, I know there's been multiple times where um, I personally wear Krispies because um, they've got a wider toe box. Uh, and, you know, there's, there were multiple times where I was walking over deadfall or whatever, and we had our camps on our backs and, uh, and I would have rolled or broken an ankle multiple times if I didn't have that good ankle support that's built into those boots. Um, and it, it's definitely key to, to have a good ankle support when you're out. Cause again, you just get fatigued after a long day of carrying stuff yep. around, or you just plant in the wrong spot. And, uh, if you don't have the ankle support, you can, it, it can be no fun, uh, real quick. <laughs> real quick. Yeah. Walking yeah. sticks too. I would add that to the, mm. their, People might be like, you're a sissy, why do you use walking sticks? No, they can save you from falling down the mountain. They help you climb up hills. They're very, they're a great tool. <clears throat> I agree. There's times to be tough, man. And then there's other times where you need to have <laughs> good four-wheel drive, you know? That's right. And, uh, <laughs> and those walking sticks are definitely good four-wheel drive. <laughs> yes, they are. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And it's funny because, you know, there, there's, uh, there, I'm sure you know about peaks um, that they, they named their, their walking sticks, the sissy sticks. And uh, I always laughed at that. Cause I'm like, yeah, cause people always say you're a sissy if you have walking sticks. But yeah. <laughs> Might as well ride hey. that train. <laughs> They're great yeah. when you have a heavy pack on or exactly side hill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dragging a deer. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. So now let's get into let's get into some other fun things here. So um, what's your rifle of choice if you only had one rifle uh, for all the game that you hunt? Yeah, 300 Ultra Mag. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, that's my favorite for sure. Yeah. Big bullet shoots fast, hits hard, puts them down quick. <laughs> that's awesome. I was in a long ways. <laughs> yeah, I was in a so I don't know about much about Ultra Mag. Um, and may I, you know, talk to you about that a little bit, but I was in a Walmart where there were these two old guys, you know, uh, they probably wore their their version of camo is probably a plaid shirt and jeans. And um you know, back in the day, that's what everyone used to wear. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and they probably killed more deer than any of us. So, um, <laughs> um, so no, but they were sitting there talking and, and I guess, you know, they'd come into Walmart together. They were back at the, the gun counter and, um, and the guy was like, Hey, you know, what ammo are you looking for? He was like, Oh, 300 wind mag. And his buddy like looks back, like all offended. And he's like, do you like to have a shoulder? You know? <laughs> And I just laughed so hard because these like 70 year old men were over here, like arguing about, you know, <laughs> recoil on a rifle. <laughs> but so what's the what's the ultra mag? What's I mean, are the ballistic similar to like a wind mag, uh, you know, it's like a, it's a it's like a 
bigger version of the wind mag. Okay. It's, it's not belted case um, like the wind mag is. Um, it's just a bigger case, holds more powder, can shoot a bigger bullet. Um, okay, cool. I like the yeah, wind mag. I have, I, do, I have two 300 wind mags that I love, but I mean, but that ultra mag, if I'm going on a big hunt, where I mean, you know, where I really want to get out, touch something, or I just, I don't know, it shoots. So I'm actually, it's get, I'm actually getting a new barrel on it right now. So I shot the other barrel out because I love to shoot it so much. <laughs> you getting a shoulder replacement too? <laughs> uh, well, I got a muzzle brake, so it's not okay. too bad at all. But um, not for you, but the people beside you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, It'll blow you off the rock. Right. <laughs> Great caliber, though. I mean, we shoot a. We shoot a 230 gram bullet out of it. Wow. Shooting over 3,000 feet per second. So, yeah. That'll knock something down. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. And then you mentioned bows as well. And that's kind of something that I've, the last two years, I've gone full on into, into bows. So, um, do you still do a lot of bow hunting or are you mainly rifle at this point? Um, I would, I mean, Honestly, my favorite hunt huh, is probably like as far as guns is muzzleloader. But um, I, yeah, I love archery hunting. I'm not gonna say I don't. I mean, I, I love, I love the to be able to hunt all three. That's you know that new that elk tag they have now. You can hunt all three, and then I do dedicated hunters, so I can hunt all three. Uh, but yeah, I, I enjoy bow hunting. I love getting out and getting close to the animals and. There's, there's the connection right there too. I mean, you see so much more when you're archery hunting up close and, you know, the animals don't even know you're there and they're not as scared. They're not even been shot at, and <clears throat> um, but no. yeah, yeah was... if I had to choose one, it, it'd be a boomstick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. They, I mean, you definitely have a, a higher success rate, especially if you're going on as many hunts as you do in a year. Um, and I mean, again, you've been hunting for a while, so I'm, I'm assuming you're not where I'm at, where it's a, you know, I'm still kind of in the area of if it has antlers, it's in the freezer. Um, hey you know. dude, it don't, I, that does, no, that's cool. I'm totally, that does not bother me at all. Cause Hey, if a, if a deer walks out and it makes me happy, I mean, I get messages all the time. Like, wh like, what did he score? I don't know. Didn't score him. Mm. He made me happy when he came out, you know, I, he, he got me going and it's not about the size. And I think there's way too much emphasis on that right now in the industry. Like just go out and have a good time. If a two point walks out and you want to shoot a two point, shoot a two point. It's cool. It's like yeah. all out there having a good time hunting. Isn't that, isn't that what we're supposed to do? So yeah. no, I agree with that. You're I, uh, totally I, good. You can choose me two points as you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this Whatever, last year, <laughs> this last year I got a I got a, a gift from my grandpa. I got a muzzle loader. And so you know, I put in for the hunt and I didn't think I was gonna draw and I ended up drawing and um didn't see anything too big. It's pretty pressured up here in the in the bountiful area. Um, but the last day, uh, you know, I got a hundred yard shot on a, a like a one by two. And I was like, he's got antlers. Like, <laughs> I'm just excited to be able to shoot the muzzle loader. <laughs> Heck yeah. Um, but no, I, I I hear you on that. It's it's definitely something that I still don't understand. Like when someone's like, oh, that's a 350 bull. I'm like, is that big, medium? Like to me, that's where I'm. I'm in the big, medium, small stage. Like you know, <laughs> or when people say raghorn, and I look at them like that's a five point. But now I can tell the difference. Like there's good five points and there's the, the, you know, the smaller, younger five points. I'm starting to understand all that, but like, I still can't look at a, like an elk, for example, and be like, oh, he's definitely over 300. I'm like 300 pounds. Like, what? <laughs> <You know? laughs> like I'd say he's probably more than that, <laughs> but uh, like, that's just kind of what, you know, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't look at it for scoring. I look at it. I love that you said, you know, what gets you excited and um and I think that's key as well, like not getting so wrapped up on, you know, the exact scoring of an animal. Obviously, if you've got something that's some freak of nature that's got like an eight by nine, you know, you're like, oh, and that would definitely get me excited. Right. But again, you're not going into it for uh, for the for the scoring. You're going into it because you're excited about it. And I, I love that you mentioned that um, we're public land hunters. Mm. 
you gotta you gotta be an opportunist. You gotta take advantage of it. And it don't matter if it's a spike elk, it's hitting the dirt with me. Um, I hunt public land elk bulls, and if it walks out and it's got antlers, it's probably gonna get shot with a bow. Yep. So, yeah, but. exactly. I hear you on that one. Uh, so is there? A, I did have one question that popped up. Um, that I wanted to ask that I haven't asked you. And I kind of want to end it with this and let me pull up the question really quick. It was kind of an interesting one, actually. Um, let's see here. Okay. So this was the, this is the question I wanted to end on. Um, if you were a time traveler, what period of time would you like to visit? <laughs> wow. If I was a time traveler, I would definitely go back. Let's see. Where would I go? I would go back to Viking time. Yep. I would love to be like, and I think I have some Viking heritage and I have to go back and look. If I remember right, though, I think I do have some Viking heritage some you know my ancestors go back there kind of some on my mom's side i think but yeah i'd love to go back in that time i mean i think it'd be just cool to be a fight with swords and <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome yeah that would be really and cool women right? they were they were badasses back then too you know you had those shield maidens i mean they're they're that was a that was a tough time to live and they they hacked it out of the woods and yeah, I would definitely like to. And maybe I have that life. I don't know. Yeah. Ready no, I, or twice. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I, I love that. That's that's really cool. Um, you know, and they have to have had some sort of sense of humor uh, to, be, you know, to have the consciousness to, to name Iceland and Greenland, you know, for what they are. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> being the opposites. They're probably like, ha, we got them now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's cool that's awesome man well um it's really been a pleasure having you on it's good chatting with you and, and catching up and i love hearing your passion about uh being in the outdoors and I, I love that you're a, a gear nerd as much as i am um and uh maybe i need to go delve into socks a little bit more after this conversation <laughs> people are gonna be like socks hey i'm a sock guy i don't know what it is i love good camo i love great packs but i like socks i think we figured out why I really, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you got to blame your dad and breaking your ankle. Yeah, I got to figure this out somehow. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, well, thank you again for your time today, man. I really appreciate uh, you coming on and, and sharing some of your stories. And um, I'm, I'm really intrigued to, to keep following you and your journey and uh, good luck to you on your bear hunt. Oh, thank you very much. And I really appreciate you having me on. And I really like what I wanted to tell you too. I really like what you you represent on your social media too. I love the family and the, the outdoors and, and of course the spirituality as well. I really like that. So, yeah. Yeah. And I, I've just noticed with people, you know, like you and, and many other people out there that are, are successful on a consistent basis, they incorporate faith and family. And for me, I wrap that into one because it's an eternal principle in my opinion. Uh, and, and from what I know and my experiences um, and then fitness and the outdoors you know, people who are constantly successful and live happy lives, um, incorporate those three things into their lives in one form or another, uh, on a consistent basis. And so, um, I, I love that you do the same thing. Um, you made it work with three daughters, a wife, and you're still doing it to this day. And, uh, there's no excuse. You know, I feel like people overcomplicate getting outside. They overcomplicate fitness. They overcomplicate the family, um, when it really doesn't have to be that complicated. Uh, but thank you. I, I appreciate that. I didn't pay him to say that guys. Um, so <laughs> if, if people, if people want to, if people want to find you, uh, where's the best way for them to find you? Instagram, Mountain Goat Polly. Um, we have a social media page on Facebook. It's called MGP Outdoors. We post a lot of spirituality stuff, hunting stuff on that as well. And then um, my, our YouTube channel, uh, Mountain Goat Polly. No, no, we actually rebranded it. That used to be Mountain Goat Poly. We 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 rebranded everything to MGP Outdoors. So it's MGP Outdoors on, on YouTube, and then we have a website too. It's MGP Outdoors. So. Awesome, cool. Well, I'll leave those links down below. And uh, again, thank you for being on. And uh, as you guys well know, 
Uh, and as always, I will say, get out, live your life, and love it. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that conversation as much as I did. Us gear nerds over here nerding out about everything from socks to other equipment. And uh, definitely go check out Mountain Goat Polly. I'll leave his links down below. And uh, just enjoy getting outside as much as he does. He loves connecting with nature. And I, I love that about him, learning more about him during this conversation. So leave a review for this podcast, guys. I'm really grateful for you coming over and listening to my podcast when there's so many podcasts out there to listen to. I really appreciate your support. Things are growing faster than I could have imagined, and I really appreciate that. So leave a review. If it's anything less than five stars, definitely go send me an email or a message so that I can take your feedback and implement it. I definitely want to know so that I can get better. Really appreciate it, guys. Hope you have an awesome rest of your day. And of course, get out, live your life, and love it.